How will he find us when he comes? Okay, and ready. And when he asks us to dedicate ourselves ever more perfectly to him, how will he find us? Awake and ready. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father Divine, Mother, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters, Great Masters, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Babaji Krishna, The Hearing Mahashaya, The Hearing Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Paramahansa Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, Saints of all religions, We humbly bow before Thee. And invoke your presence. And invoke your presence. Transform us. Transform us. In your grace. In your grace. Help us to open ourselves. Help us to open ourselves. To the flow of your divine grace. To the flow of your divine grace. That we may become your pure channel. That we may become your pure channel. To share your blessings in this world. To share your blessings in this world. Oh,
then live by that power. Never wear the mask of false humility. Humility is self-acceptance and self-honesty. You have a right to all power if you seek it in infinity, and if you never hold the thought that it resides in your little self. And now let's affirm together, first in a strong voice, grabbing the attention of the conscious mind, I live by thy power, Lord. I live by thy power, Lord. What I have is ever thine. What I have is ever thine. Ever thine. Ever thine. Taking it a little softer. I live by thy power, Lord. I live by thy power, Lord. What I have is ever thine. What I have is ever thine. Ever thine. Ever thine. And now in a whisper, bringing it into the subconscious mind. I live by thy power, Lord. What I have is ever thine. Ever thine. And now silently, mentally broadcasting it at the point between the eyebrows, taking it to the superconscious level. I live by thy power, Lord. What I have is ever thine. Ever thine. I live by thy power, Lord. What I have is ever thine, ever thine. And please pray silently with me. Thou art the doer, Lord, not I. Express thy perfection through me as I strive ever eagerly to live in thy light. Oh, peace. peace. Amen. joining us online as well. Uh, my name is Dharma Devi, and this is my husband, Naryam. And this reading is from Rays of the One Light, weekly commentaries on the Bible and the Bhagavad Gita, as taught by Paramahansa Yogananda. Truth is one and eternal. Realize oneness with it in your deathless self within. And by the way, this is week 17. How high should we aspire? The following commentary is based on the teachings of Paramahansa Yogananda. The passage this week is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5. I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. The easiest explanation for these words is that they were spoken in criticism of the scribes and Pharisees, particularly since Jesus was often verbally attacked by them and stood up to them fearlessly. However, it wouldn't have been much of a challenge to, di to the disciples who aspired to spiritual perfection to tell them, don't be like those who lack any such aspiration. Jesus, in fact, says only a few verses later, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What Jesus was referring to here then was the self-righteousness of the priest. Don't seek perfection, he was saying to his disciples, in the image you project towards others. Don't be satisfied with a goodness born merely of ego definitions. The highest virtue is to transcend the very thought of personal virtue in the realization of God alone as the doer. Before this realization, even the thought, I am kind or I am truthful, is self-limiting. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, the seventh chapter, yet hard the wise Mahatma is to find that man who saith, all is Vasudeva. Thus through Holy Scripture, God has spoken to mankind. Good morning again, friends. Good morning. I want to share from uh, Whispers from Eternity. These are, if you're not familiar, uh, Yogananda wrote a book of 
prayers. He called them prayer demands. And actually, when he left the body, yeah, before he left the body, he said, read from my whispers. Eternally, I will speak to you through them. So this one is prayer demand. Make me anything, a Christian or a Hindu, anything to realize thee. Let me be Christian, Jew, Hindu, Buddhist, Mohammedan, or Sufi. I care not what my religion, race, creed, or color. If only I can win my way to thee. But let me be none of these. If that identity enmeshes me in an enclosing net of religious or social formalities, let me travel the royal high road of realization which leads to thee. If I am traveling on some bypath of religion, lead me unto the one common highway of realization which leads straight to thee. Send me the sunshine of thy wisdom that it lead me to the morning of my growing powers and send me the moon of thy mercy to guide me rightly if I am ever lost in the dark night of sorrow. We were, uh, Darwin Davy and I were watching, a, in case you were watching a movie last night called I Prefer Heaven. It's about this uh, Italian saint, Filippo Neri. And it reminded me of this whispers because that in being enmeshed in social formalities, he was a very uh, simple man. He was a priest and he went to Rome and he wanted to be a missionary. He wanted to go to India and to serve as a missionary. I think it was around in the 1700s or, or so. I'm not exactly sure of the time. But he was denied that uh, passage to go to India to serve as a missionary. And so he, he felt a little lost and didn't know where to serve. So he just fell on his knees one night and prayed to Christ and said, Lord, I, I'm your servant. I just, I'm lost. I just don't know how to serve you. And while he was in Rome, he came across a number of small children, you know, that everyone considered them tramps and thieves. They were uh, children of prostitutes or this or that, and they were the outcasts of society, so no one cared about them. And people would just, you know, kept their space from them. They were considered outcasts. But he, he took them in, you know, like the Divine Mother, and the way that he changed them was through love and he accepted them and he just in his uh, simple and sweet way he would have them dancing and singing and then of course the the church dignitaries you know the the bishops and uh, all whatnot from the Vatican didn't when this word got out they did not like this because he was bucking all the formalities uh, of religious structure you know that that came out of Rome and in fact, he was so pure at heart, people began to flock to him for confession. And, and he was just doing confession you know, in, the, in a prairie, you know, in a field. And uh, this is not the, this, he could not do confession there. They didn't like that either. And this one man that he saw, he said, well, what's my, you know, give me my, um, my penance. Thank you. And uh, he said, your penance is to be happy. He's like, that's it? <laughs> and he said, yes, God is a God of joy. Go, go with joy, be happy. And uh, anyway, it just reminded me of that, the simplicity of heart. And this, you know, this reading today is essentially important for us to understand. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, where do we find perfection? Right? We start to look for it in this world. We do not see there is, the world is breaking, right? It's more a question of which way are we gonna break? And that's why Master always exhorted, stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. Well, this is the time. And so, if we're gonna look for perfection outwardly, we're gonna be continually dissatisfied. And we can find a myriad of things, right, to criticize about the world. It, um, reminds me of, I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Larson and the Far Side. He's got some absurd 
little cartoons that some of them are just uh, delightful. But there's this one uh, where the man, it's a perfect day and it's a sunny day. He's washing his car and he's whistling and there's a telephone wire and there's a bird right above his car. And you see the thought caption of the bird. And the, bird's, and the bird is thinking, you're mine. <laughs> All mine. <laughs> you know, that's the way of the world is once you get things perfect, it's sullied, it's soiled. So the question becomes, where are we going to find perfection? Of course, that's what the masters and the saints are, have been telling us for millennia, to turn within. What did St. John say? I turned and I heard a trumpet. And of course, fundamentalism now says, well, if you don't accept Jesus Christ, the trumpets are coming, the apocalypse is coming. But what was he really talking about? I turned within and I heard the trumpet sounds of the Divine Mother, the Om. This is the vibration, her eternal presence that has been whispering to us throughout all eternity. And so the, the question for us is, how do we open ourselves? You know, one of Swami Kriyananda's last books that he wrote, which is a beautiful book, it's called Cooperating with Grace. You know, and that's what I was mentioning in our fire ceremony that grace is like the sun, you know, it shines equally on everybody. And so how do we open to that flow of divine grace? Well, that's where the techniques are incredibly helpful, right? The energization exercises. Yogananda actually said that those are a tool for physical, help you with physical perfection, right? And what's the prayer that he gave them? Oh, infinite spirit, recharge my body with thy cosmic energy, right? Not my own, it's you're opening yourself, right? He was teaching us to open ourselves with the mouth of God, the medulla, to allow that infinite energy to flood us. And the technique of concentration, the highest technique of concentration, he called it Om Sa, which I know all of you practice. That technique is a technique of perfect concentration. If we could just perfectly concentrate on God, that's all we would need. We, we would saturate ourselves with God's presence and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the concerns of the world. That chant that Dharma Devi led us in, when thy song flows through me, oh, life is sweet, death a dream. Yogananda used to sing it in reverse as well. Death is sweet, life is a dream. That's the ultimate goal of our yoga practice. That's India's deathless contribution to the world's treasury of knowledge is this breath mastery. That's Aung Sa, which Yogananda actually called the baby Kriya. And then of course the Kriya yoga technique proper is on a deeper level of controlling that life force of offering ourselves. But techniques alone aren't enough. You know, it says Swami Kriyananda said in his autobiography, The New Path, there's a beautiful chapter he actually has in there you should read called Kriya Yoga. And he talked about these techniques and he said that Kriya can't give you God, but it can help you give yourself to him. And that's a subtle but very important difference that in essence, to perfect ourselves, we need to open our, we, we can't perfect ourselves. God, we offer ourselves up and then God can cleanse us and purify us and we're perfected in him. It's, you know, human perfection, right, is like a contradiction in terms. It's we're perfected in God. And it's the, the ego that wants to take uh, credit, right, for everything we do. The, oh, if it's bad things, how bad. Are, I, I grew up in an Italian uh, household. So there's a lot of uh, Catholic guilt that was, you know, slathered around very generously. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a sin, Johnny. Uh, he's, like, he's, oh, it's a sin. Oh, we had every, everything was a sin. It was just like, it was part of our everyday parlance, this, this sin. And, you know, as Master said, the greatest sin is to call yourself a sinner. Because with that self-identification, it then gives you the right to just go on you know, sinning. <laughs> the idea 
is, a, is to forget yourself. That's why Swami coupled the reading today with humility, right? True humility isn't self-deprecation. It's not beating ourselves up. It's forgetting ourselves. So how do we forget ourselves? All drunk go with thy name. We have to become commune with God. That's the real perfection is in the inner communion, right? In that inner sense of feeling that oneness of God's presence. That's where we're perfected. Because as long as there's even that subtle veil of I did this and I did that good thing, or I, it's that subtle veil of separation. It's coming to everything we do. It's that he did it. He's doing it through us. And there has to be a point of surrender uh, in our hearts. There was this amazing um, woman that I met. I saw her speak at a book expo years ago. You probably have heard of her. Uh, she wrote that book, Left to Tell. She was the woman, the survivor of the, one of the survivors of the Rwandan genocide. Um, and this is where a million people in three months were, were slaughtered. It's unbelievable atrocity. But she was, had to go into a little three by four uh, bathroom and was hidden with seven other women in this little space for 91 days while her parents, her grandparents, her brothers were all killed. And she had nowhere to turn except prayer. And she was raised Catholic as well. And she went to praying her rosary and went to the Our Father and came to that part, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then she thought about what she was saying and said, Lord, I cannot say this honestly. I'm, I'm literally hearing the people outside who've killed my family, who've killed a million, million people. I cannot say this. And she felt that rage and anger welling up within her. And then she came to a point where she surrendered and said, Lord, help me. And there was a transformation that happened in her heart where she felt Christ's love and felt that she could honestly pray for them and forgive them. And in fact, after the genocide, when she was free, she went back and found the very people that did kill her family, and she did forgive them in person. And just you know, seeing the light that flew through her, the song of spirit that was flowing through her, that love, that compassion, you know, it's an extreme scenario, but you know, we're in extreme times, so it's good to look at these things and look at how we respond when we're put up against the stress of death of ourselves, of our loved ones, of all that we hold dear, because ultimately this, this Bhagavad Gita is it. That is the song of spirit. And everything that that scripture is saying to us, it's helping us prepare for that great final exam of death. And that is why if we can learn not just the techniques, but learn to love God with, as Christ said, with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all our strength, then we'll know. It, it's the burning through the curtain of uncertainty, of doubt, that we will know, like Master said, that quote we have in the back of the temple, the time for knowing God has come. You cannot get to it through the intellect. That's why opening the heart and opening ourselves to divine grace is where the great benediction comes from. You know, St. Paul, I wanted to share um, in the Bible, I have it's on the seat here. That's what St. Paul said about grace. It's a great divine gift. And I just remembered this passage I wanted to share. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you. It is the gift of God, and it is not from works, so no one may boast. The great gift of God is his grace. This is why Master said the spiritual path is 25% your effort, 25% the effort of the guru on your behalf, and 50% God's grace. It's God's grace 
is always there, but we, our, our work is just to cast our sail, right, to catch that divine wind. But like the purification ceremony, God works through instruments. When we say, I seek purification by the grace of God, well, then God works through the divine master, right? Our ordained instrument for our liberation, for our freedom. And so he is coming to us through these great ones to remind us, to awaken us to our highest potential. I wanted to um, close with a story. When I was at Ananda Village, there was a time where uh, I had this gardenia flower. I know Yogananda used to say gardenias were one of his favorite flowers, and perhaps maybe his favorite. They have a beautiful fragrance. And I had this opportunity to, I had to go over, I was doing something for Swami Kriyananda, so I brought the gardenia over for him. I wanted to share it with him. And his cousin was there at that time. And he introduced me he said, hello, Beth, this is my friend, Phil. And it was such a simple interchange. You know, it was, was nothing outwardly happened, but I was so uh, disarmed by Swami's sweetness. And the, the smell of the gardenia was sort of wafting at that moment. And I felt, well, that's, this is the song of spirit. It's the loving kindness mm -hmm. that comes through divine friendship. And that's... That is the song that we want to emanate. If we love God deeply enough, it's not enough just to love God. That's why this second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. We have to, Yogananda said it himself, you can't free. You cannot free yourself unless you help free six others. It's part of the divine law that we share. And in this spirit, we want to share the highest octave. Right, which is that song that is flowing through us. And if we can do that with great earnestness and great sincerity, then we will know that the time of God has come in our lives and to our friends. God bless you. If you